Welcome to a brand new episode of Cup of EO, the tea break size podcast that gets to the heart of the important topics in the world of voiceover. Expect candid stories, top tips and sage advice as I chat with expert guests who are at the top of their game in the voiceover industry. I'm your host, Kimberly Parker, tea addict and VOpreneur. And this week, I'll be spilling the tea on demo reels, why they're so important, whether you should hire a professional producer or not, as well as tips on how to get the most out of your demo recording session. Probably the most important thing you need as a voiceover artist. Demos, reels, demo reels, voice reels. You'll end up typing and saying those words a lot as a voiceover artist. No matter what you call them, your voiceover demos act as your CV and a marketing tool to help you find both work and representation. They demonstrate your vocal and acting range and versatility. It might be the first time that a producer or a casting director will hear your voice, and you maybe have 10 to 15 seconds to make a great first impression. So getting your demos right, whether it's your first ever, first in a particular genre or an update, is really important. But when did VOs start using demos? And how has the evolution of technology affected how important demos are to the industry? One of the first books I got my hands on when I started working as a voiceover artist was Peter Dixon's autobiography, VoiceOver Man. As a legend in the field, I knew to expect some great stories and get a real insight into what the industry was like as far back as the 70s and 80s. And it was fascinating and obviously completely different to how we do things today. In the pre-digital era, voiceover artists would have to lug around actual reels or analog recordings on spools of magnetic tape from place to place for casting directors and potential clients' consideration. With a much less crowded market in terms of the number of voice actors and before the internet, home studios or casting sites, sending out your demo was the main way to get your foot in the door. And once you were hired, and assuming you did a good job, chances are that that client would call you back to the studio to use you again and again. Of course, these days, things are very different, and a lot more than just your demos are taken into consideration, such as your auditions, your recording equipment, if recording from your home studio, and budget. It's thought that the concept of demos dates back to the 1930s, around the early days of radio broadcasting. Actors would demonstrate their abilities to potential clients in live auditions or performances. Then in 1928 in Germany, the invention of magnetic tape recording changed everything. It was solely used for the military for a while and only became available for domestic use in the 1950s. Voiceover artists could now capture their performances and replay them on demand. It was only then another 30 years or so before the shift from analogue to digital started changing the VO landscape again. Digital recording and editing software made it easier to create more polished and professional sounding demos, including music and sound effects, allowing for a more immersive and engaging result. The internet age and rise of social media and casting sites from the late 90s and noughties made it easier to share and market your demos to potential clients worldwide and gave everyone a much more even playing field to showcase their brand online by creating a dedicated website on which to host their demos. Fast forward another decade and we see customization becoming a trend. A generic all-purpose demo no longer cuts it, so voice actors start creating tailored demos for specific areas, in a bid to increase their chances of more work in a variety of genres. Today there's even more emphasis on personalization. Modular demos are becoming more popular, where you change the order and samples in your demo depending on who you're sending it to. You're also expected to include different languages, if you happen to speak any, and various different accents. There's also an emerging trend for visual demo reels, and not just for mocap or on-screen acting, where there is a need to see the performer, but also for voice actors for different genres, where you add appropriate video imagery to elevate your audio performance. It's pretty clear to see that the demo landscape has changed massively over quite a short period of time, partly down to advances in technology and partly down to societal changes like globalisation and new ways of working and communicating. Time for some guests, I think. This week, I wanted to ask my guests about their thoughts on how important demos are in the current climate, what's the best approach in terms of curating or creating one from scratch, 
and what tips they'd give for getting the most out of a demo recording session. Introducing, in order of appearance, Ali Murphy, Jen Lawton Hunt, Darren Altman, Abby Phillips, Alexia Kombu, and Jack Oddy. I've included more information about all of them in the show notes, so be sure to check those out after the episode. I think demo reels are a tool that we have and it's not the be all and end all um, but it is important to have them it's like a shop window it's like a you know if someone someone needs to listen to you so they do need to hear how you sound Um, and I think it depends on where you are in the world because in Europe they're not considering that they're usually cast room demos they're not they're not really fussed on on the you know crazy production and high value sound effects and stuff that you use whereas here in the states they really do and yet the demo is not really used in anything other than getting an agent or um you know having on your website but they really do value the the higher production over here so i do think it's important i think it's important to think about who you want to hire you and that can be your first one um, that you do so you know corporate really is is probably one of the first ones that I wanted to do because I knew that that was going to be my bread and butter getting work every day job ideally I think it's useful if you can be to be in person in the studio and this is a personal preference but for me I want to be um, concentrating on the performance rather than the engineering side of things um, and you can just then forget about it and just go with with your characters or or the the scripts and everything you're reading that's just something for me that would be important. So I'm looking at getting a video game demo uh, created this year and I definitely want to be there in person. Um, and because I'm looking at characters now, the preparation is a really big part of that. Um, so I don't just want to be putting on voices. So I think preparing for any kind of demo is really important as well. So if you're getting scripts written for you, prepping those, really thinking about, again, about the characters, even if it's like commercial or corporate, you know, the characters behind that or the kind of intentions of that, I think are really important. Don't just wing it because you won't be getting your best performance, even if it's already a good standard. I think that demos, I mean, more and more you're getting asked to audition. So um, you will have to audition for that role specifically. So a generic reel won't um, necessarily help you land the role. So when I when I started, you know, I'm on, on the new path of being a voiceover, um, so I started doing a load of characters and I put all that together. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll do an impressions reel and, and just made sure that people knew about it, really. Um, and so that if they needed a, a celebrity sounder like they could come to me. Now, you will get uh, this is a bit controversial, I think, but you will get lots of American demo producers saying, oh, you need an automotive reel. I mean, it's a great money spinner for them charging three thousand dollars a pop. Of course, you need an automotive reel. I was very fortunate to have those few years um, as a a late teen um, where I had amazing resources in in the sense of my mum and a lot of her friends and colleagues in the industry who had been doing it for decades who were giving me absolutely like incredible knowledge um and so much I I sometimes had ISDN sessions when we used to do ISDN um with uh with some of mum's friends who just wanted to help me um to improve and then I would create demos out of things that they'd helped me with so my demo reels have always really come out of, oh, well, I did that job and it sounded really good, so I'll put that in. And um, I have always had them produced by um, producers that I work with regularly who kind of help me to put them together and will choose the best ones and the best parts of each. So I've never actually done a demo session. Right, so a demo reel is probably the most important thing you need as a voiceover artist. Um, They showcase the kinds of genres you work in, the kinds of styles you can do. Um, They act as the first port of call, as your introduction. Um, It's what's on your website, it's what's... It's basically your CV. So without them, you're invisible. Sometimes you do get booked off your reels. It's one of those things where you just have to do it. Yes, they're expensive, but you have to bite the bullet and do it in order to be taken seriously within our industry. An afternoon in a studio, you could probably make people sound really, really good, but are they really like that? 
in a session where so hopefully you know there's loads of examples on the website where and I'm only saying that because I've had feedback from you know just from chatting to producers and, and writers and things like that we sometimes it happened to me when I was a writer with someone had an amazing show reel and they just they just couldn't deliver in a live session so I think it's good we can re- reassure you know our, our potential clients that we're we are the real deal do you need a pro demo reel well this is the first time someone will hear your voice you only have a few seconds to make a great first impression. So do you really want to blow it with bad audio quality, a less than well-written script and poorly directed vocals? Probably not. If you can afford it, getting professional demos is a worthwhile investment in your career and will end up paying for themselves. When you're ready to record your first demo reel, you'll find that many of the top producers and companies that provide that service also offer some coaching or training options too. So it's worth looking into that. I always work with producers and coaches that have been recommended to me. If you think about it, it's easy for someone to toot their own horn and say that they're great at what they do, but positive reviews from their clients or students will be the real proof of the pudding. This is where Google business reviews are invaluable. We then come on to the argument of whether a demo reel should contain material that is for demonstrative purposes only, or should it be carefully curated from projects you've already worked on. Well, it depends on both the genre and whether you're lucky enough to have worked in that genre already. I would say that if you're looking to get into a new genre which you haven't previously done any work in and you have the budget, then it's a no-brainer. You should definitely invest in a professionally produced reel. But if you're wanting to diversify your reels and have some good examples of your work in a particular genre to include on a new curated reel, then go for it. Join me same time next week when I'll be spilling the tea on demo reels from the producers who make them. I kind of act like a mirror for people um, so that when they give me a performance, I kind of reflect that back to them. The current market demands quite tailored and bespoke demos. Conversational, conversational, conversational. I cannot hit that home enough. Thanks for tuning in, my caffeinated comrades. If this episode has sparked any questions or comments or you just want to connect, you can find my email address and social handles at KimberlyParker.com. And please do follow and leave a review if you like what you've heard. You've been listening to Cup of VO. Until next time, 